I'm bringing you tips, tricks, hacks, secrets, whatever you want to call them. These are what I have learned through the past few years that have helped me so much perfect my makeup technique. And I hope that you're going to enjoy all of these tips that I've rolled into this video for you. Let's get into it right now. Hi there friends, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I'm gonna to be going over a few tips and tricks that I have picked up along the way that I have kind of developed for my more mature skin. These are really kind of special to me. Um, more of my secrets and tips and tricks that I have developed just for myself personally. These are ones that I have kind of developed just because I'm 53 and I really feel like my skin changed, my eyes changed, my lips changed, and I wanted to be able to look as youthful as I possibly could. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I do have a numbering system that I use. I will put up a number somewhere in one of these corners right here that will be from one to however many products that I'm using. That number will go up as I'm using that product. Just remember that number or jot down that number. Go into the, descri the description box, open up the description box, and next to the number that you jotted down, you're going to find the link and the product, and you will be able to see the product that you're interested in. Also, I always love to share with you what I have on for a top and my jewelry today, and I will share with you that these little earrings are so much fun. They're little hoops that just thread through, and they have a little lotus flower right here that is so cute. Silver, I think these are 925 silver, along with the necklace. Um, these came separately. There are two different necklaces that I put together today. I can link those for you. And of course, my top, I can show you a little bit right here. So the video is called Tiny Tweaks with Powerful Payoff for Makeup. Let's get into that video right now. All right, so the first tip that I'm gonna share with you is actually one that I came up with out of necessity for my aging skin and particularly my aging neck. We all have this loose skin down here as we age. It's just one of those lovely things that we get. And what I decided was I was gonna find a way to make that look longer, possibly disguise this a little bit so that it wasn't so badly seen. And so that's where I decided to start experimenting with more contouring. I have a Focalore contour right here. It's in 04 and I've really been enjoying this powder, particularly the contour color is a nice color. You're not getting a warm, warm color that's gonna bring attention to that area. So what I want you to do is I want you to to load up your brush. Now I will leave a link to a brush that's pretty close to this. It's not the identical one, but it's one that's very inexpensive on Amazon that you can get. So what I did was I started here on the actual chin part, right up under the chin, and I put powder there. Now this can go along the jaw line. If you have really pronounced gels, just put them right on top of there and kind of sweep it out a little bit. That's going to help disguise the jowl line just a little bit as well. Um, it's going to just give you more of a crisp looking jowl li jaw line, not jowl line, and it's going to really help that. And then you take the powder and you're just going to sweep it back and forth right there on the chin. Now you're going to turn your fan brush and you're going to make a Y right here on your chin. And you make that Y and then with the Y you're going to bring it straight down in the front right there on the chin and then just kind of blend it out a little bit so it doesn't look like you have a, a streak of dark right there uh, we're just creating an illusion of darkness right there underneath the chin it really quickly will define your jawline and give you a crisp look to your neck it's very simple one two three and you're done okay tip number two take a look at that eyebrow on this side that's done it has lifted that eye and framed that eye to where it looks like it's being lifted up and that's what you want to do with your eyebrow. You don't want to bring your eyebrow down on the tail here so that it gets pulled down. You don't want to leave them undone because obviously, look, it doesn't look like anything is happening up there. You don't want to do a very small line because that's kind of a dated look. You want to look as youthful as you can with your brows. In comes this product that I have been absolutely in love with, and it is the 
Ulta Beauty Brow Tint. And I have shown this just very recently, but I'm in love with this product because of the size of the wand. And also the product inside of here almost gives my brows a laminated effect. I have been regrowing my brows, but they're still fairly sparse. There's not a ton there. There's some, but there's not a ton there. And I really want my brows to look more natural, not just painted in or even with the pen or anything. I want them to look as natural as possible, but I need that to lift so that my eye looks lifted. So I'm going to take that. It's already loaded and Please keep in mind, once again, I say this often in my videos and I do it because I don't want anybody to think that I am nervous. I'm not nervous. I have a disability, which is a palsy in my hands. In this instance, the palsy actually shakes my hand so much that it helps me get those really fluffy brows. So we've got a little bit of a positive going on, even though we have a disability. So I want you to take that and I want you to just fluff up every single hair that you have. What I do is I'm actually touching the skin. I want to get all of the product off the spoolie and onto my brow hair. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm almost painting in the eyebrow and then I am not having to use three or four products or however many I was using three, I guess, for a long time. And I am just fluffing every single hair. When I come right here to the peak of my eyebrow, I want to build that up quite a bit so that I have a little bit of a lift there. Again, a little bit more lift. And I'm just filling these in as much as I absolutely can. And then I'm going to go above them. Don't ever go below them. Go above them. So I just work with it. I mess around with it until it looks fairly close to the other one. I've said it a million times. We don't have twins for eyebrows. At least I don't. They're not even sisters. They might be cousins, third cousins. Who knows? But they really don't have to be identical, especially as we age. Embrace those little imperfections. Don't worry about them being so symmetrical. Now you can see how much that just raised that eye. The next tip I actually came across also out of necessity for a very long time on my channel, I was outlining the bottom of my eye underneath right there just with stark liners. I was actually water lining or tight lining in the water line with black or a bright color in there and then I was also lining and it was just really making my eye look dark. It was making me look a lot older. Some of the videos that I have of older videos, they really, it didn't look that good. So today I'm taking from the Sephora collection, the retractable waterproof eyeliner. This one is just in the color purple. It's really pretty. It's going to match my eye look really well. And then I have a Sigma E three zero. This is their pencil brush. And what I'm going to do is instead of taking the eyeliner all the way across, I'm just going to stay out here on the outer. It's not even a quarter. It's like an eighth. And I'm just going to put the liner in there. Sorry about the bouncing and the shaking. Just really pack that liner on in there. And I'm going to keep pushing it a little tiny bit. So there's a lot of liner in that corner right there. I'm pushing it just a little tiny bit towards where my eyeshadow goes up to. Now I'm going to take that brush and I'm just going to just gently and very lightly trail the shape of my eye just to soften it. But because I'm not bringing it all the way over, it still gives that beautiful lift to the eye that we all want. The next trick also came about out of necessity for me. As I aged, I noticed the skin right here kind of turning down and flapping down. And when I would outline my top lash line with anything, I would bring it out there. But what it was doing is if I brought it all the way out, especially if it's a black like I like, because I want that to be really close to my eyelashes to give my eyelashes a good look at the base, then it would really pull my eye down. That dark liner would make my eye look even more downturned. So now what I do is I go in and again, <laughs> here we go. I go in and I go as far in as I can on the inner corner. And then I'm just laying that eyeliner down but I keep it about a quarter inch away from the outside. And this is a dark brown. This is the NYX um, Epic Ink liner and it is the brown color instead of the black color today, 
which I do like very much. So I'm just really tight lining without going underneath the lashes to do that. And in not bringing that liner all the way around clear to the outer edge out here, the outer corner, I'm really keeping that lift because I'm not putting more darkness out there than just what my shadow is. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my mascara off of camera and I'll be right back. All right, so that eye is done. Some people don't like to have mascara on their bottom lashes. I'm one of those people that feels like it finishes my eyes, but if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. This is just what I do. So I concentrated my mascara on these outer parts as well and really filled those in and tried to fluff them up and get those as long as possible to continue on with that lift. All right, the last tricks have to do with the lips. And I get a lot of really sweet compliments from you all on my lipstick. My lips are very thin, as you can see here, but I have tricks that I do to make them look bigger. So I'm gonna bring you in just a little bit. Now, the trick to doing the lips is having a good contour. That is the first part that you want to get down. If you get that down pat, everything else is gonna seem so easy to do. So I use this one particularly from Maybelline because it's the Gone Grage color. It's an automatic pencil. Oh, has a sharpener on the bottom and a smudger if you need it, but it definitely is a beautiful, perfect contour color that just gives you a shadow. You really don't want a color there unless you're wearing a bright, bright color lipstick that you really want to go for it with. That's okay. I'm not saying don't use anything but this because I use a ton of different liners. But what I want you to do is I want you to look at the way you're doing your lip liner. So I'm going to do the lip liner without talking, but I will walk you through it in a voiceover. I started right here in the middle and I made that really big or underneath my lip completely underneath and about a third of my whole entire lip I outlined underneath my lip and then I did the same thing on the cupid's bow where I went above but once I got over here I started to bring in that lip liner putting the corners of the lips on the lip line and then matching it or meeting it with the part that you've overdrawn will help you to make that lip bigger. Now, here's the trick that I want you to think about doing. And I know so many people said, why not a tissue? I do a piece of paper. The reason is, is because when I use a tissue, it's usually too fluffy and I get little pieces of lint on there. You can also use a towel if you don't mind getting your lipstick on there, but paper works great. So just go in and blot. That's all you're gonna do. And you've taken a lot of that off. But what you've also done is you've pressed it into the skin. And now we're gonna go and we're gonna do on top of that again, the same exact thing that we just did. Starting at the middle, we're overlining. And now we're gonna connect the edges or the corners of the mouth. Now what we've done is we've reinforced that lip liner to be on there and almost budge proof. Of course, you're gonna eat and whatnot and it's not gonna be completely budge proof, but it's gonna be pretty darn close. Now I'm ch I chose to use a very bright pink lipstick today. This one is from Revlon. I believe it's one of their mattes and it's in Primrose. Nope, it says it's a cream. Press your lips together to really pack it in there. And once again, I want you to take your paper and I want you to blot. Now, now that you've blotted and everything's kind of mixed together, go back in one more time. And now you have a super budge proof, once again, lippy. And you can stop there if you want to. I usually don't stop there because I'm a girl that loves her lip gloss. This is from Sephora and this is one of my favorite ones. It's called the Glossed Glosses. And I believe this one is in wild. And as you can see in the tube right there, it kind of looks like it has some pink, purple, blue reflect. Once you get it on your lips, all it does is brighten up whatever lipstick you're wearing. And I'm just, just gonna strategically place that right in the middle, blot, and then I'm gonna put it on again, blot again, 
that's how I get a much more juicy looking lip than I actually have. My lips almost look double the size and there's no fillers. There's no nothing going on there, but I love this look and I love that contour. I hope that you did enjoy seeing some of the tips that I have found over the years that have helped me feel very flawless with my makeup. And once you get these down, they're like second nature. They take you just a couple minutes. Keep in mind that I was in teaching mode. When I get in teaching mode, it gets a little bit more in depth because I want you to be able to see everything and the reason that I do it. So if you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that as you are on your way out of here. Thanks so much for joining me today. And as we go, I'm going to throw up a video right here of maybe some more tips and tricks that you would enjoy. So go over and check those out and see if they're anything that you can use as well. I love you all very much. I hope that you're doing very well and I'll catch you in my next video. Goodbye, my friends.